What's going on? Okay. We got... Some things happened. Looks like we got disconnected. We're not handling the ping, apparently. Hmm. Right, that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, specifically, I was I was thinking, are you sure the text you added is the exact, no. <laughs> it, I mean, it appears to be. Like if we if we look at the log uh, from the ping, there could be additional spaces on the end. There don't appear to be any spaces beginning of it before the p, because our log message is like received message colon space. Maybe try with string concatenation. Yeah, I think I've seen that before. Ping, and then... Also, why is that the operator? <laughs> uh, cert. Okay, I'm just gonna... I was confused for a second, but that's your message. <laughs> Alright. Get used to it. Hello from the bot. Okay. <laughs> also, is this supposed to be a tuple? I um. Do you say tuple or tuple? I used to say tuple back in the day, and then uh, someone was like, "What do you mean? It's obviously tuple." Anyway. Uh, yeah, text and then thing. I mean, that's what's happening down here. That's how we're logging. Like, th this is the same signature as, you see the first one? Tuple. <laughs> I mean, there's, 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 there's a tuple. Uh, but what about a threepole? Or a fourpole? <laughs> anyway. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see, uh, what it does so here's changes for a new version they're, they're also looking to support event sub this is interesting though hold on oh rip that person hmm Make a generic version on top. Well, that's the thing is that we did do that. <laughs> that that is that is what this is. This is the generic version. Oh, you mean? Oh, maybe. Well, no, no, no. Because it is. It's definitely this shape. Because we are getting the ping from handle frame. Yeah, but, but but we have, we have seen that. That that is, uh, that's why I know what the text is. We have seen that. That is the message from handle frame, and we know it is a a tuple <laughs> text, and then the string. Because otherwise, this this log line would not be here. All right. So what did this person change? Convey options. Uh, I just want to make sure that the type is what we expect and things like that. Um, well, what we could do is can't you just do like inspect like that all right all 
Uh, I like more debug. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not going to restart it. Because I would like to see if what we have right now works. It gives you location as well. That's fine. I know where it's going to come from. Uh -huh, yep. Uh, and for pipelines, shows each step. Uh -huh. Oh, right, right, right. Pipelines, as in... Um, like that. Received ping. There. So we've successfully intercepted the ping with this. So there must be some trailing text on the end uh, of the text frame. And so we should have sent a Pong. Like my understanding of the behavior of handle frame is if we respond with reply, we can send back a frame. So what we should see is that um, this will not get disconnected. So we'll see if that doesn't happen. <laughs> so there's a couple things I'm looking for here. I see. Oh, this is this is connecting to IRC. It's not using WebSocket. So that makes a difference. Receive message. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> so they're th interesting. That that is actually kind of interesting. This is the result of me changing it to use um, inspect, right? But that happened. So we, we got that code change <laughs> without having to restart the process. Uh, right, so this must be the message that I'm just seeing in chat from uh, PCG. Okay, so we may see a few more that are formatted like this, and then eventually at some point we'll see messages again that are in this form. So this uh, TMI.ex doesn't appear to use uh, the WebSocket interface. I thought I read somewhere that WebSocket is the preferred way of interacting with this. Ah, and it's back. Uh, ooh, RFC uh, 1459, an IRCv3 message tag specification. Normal message flow. Yep. live messages your bot must reply with the pong message the text of the pong message must be the text from the ping message oh so that <laughs> that might not be sufficient oh yeah parsing messages in NRC too so I think what we will actually want to do is I see. What we want to actually do is this. All 
All right. Received ping. So here's a question. Can we, can we show the, uh, it'd be cool to see what that uh, rest was. Oops. Save. Recompile. But at least so far we've not been disconnected. We haven't seen like a reconnecting thing or uh, any of that. So, so far so good. Bye, Twitch TD. <laughs> hmm. So, okay, so RFC 1459 is uh, the IRC protocol. So I was gonna look to see if there were other... So I guess what I need to know is the structure of the chat message here. Is this is this an IRC thing? Like if I look in here, is the, is the structure of this message defined in this RFC? Because that will give me a place to look for um, something that's gonna be able to parse this off the shelf. I can search for like IRC stuff instead of Twitch stuff. Uh, message delivery, command parsing. Okay, lots of lots of pros. Can't find your bot. Oh no, you had a parser there as well. Was this bot in Elixir? That is a thing in here. It's from like five years ago. Receive notice about all the commands the server receives, which affect the channel. Did we get something like that when we joined? User state, room state, user state. Global user state. Okay. Hmm. Receiver text to send, text to be sent.
Ah, you found it? Nice. Like, so what I'm seeing here is like, okay, so there's a, the, the prove message command is coming from IRC and there's kind of a, a structure to find here, but obviously what we're seeing here is there's additional like user identification and then all of this like key value stuff before it. And I wonder if these things are part of the specification or are um, extra. Ooh, here we go, message format. Message has a colon and a prefix and a space. And then command and then params and CRL off. So that, like this message here, for example, uh, matches that. Base, command params and a command is some letters or numbers interesting um, mm. most protocol messages specify additional semantic and syntax for the extracted parameter strings okay I guess I was kind of hoping I could, you know, there would be some standard and I could search for that and there would be a package that would just parse that. Uh, I guess we're just, let's, let's just make something. Oh. How do we do unit tests uh, in Elixir? Is, is also a question. Did our example, okay, we do have tests. Okay, test helper, Twitch bot test. Okay. Yes, EX unit. So let's make a new thing here. We'll call this, um, So we call it message parser. Module. Uh, def module. Yep, that one. Uh, and then we just like def parse. Sure. Hey, this looks like a start. Uh, that's that's not sufficient. But let's pretend for a moment. Let's just pretend um, that we want to do something like this, and then we're going to create a test file too, I guess, and call it. Um, I don't know if we need to really like uh, match the folder structure. Why are these EXS files? And these are EX files? <laughs> I don't know the difference. Uh, okay, so let's borrow this. And we're going to create a test um, for doc test. All the doc tests found in the module. Okay. So let's call it um, message parser test.
What was that question? <laughs> was there a question? I don't even know. I'm just, um, oh, right. So why are these files EXS and these files are .ex was the question. Uh, doc test will run the test in the documentation. EXS is EX script. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So we could, so we could write tests in like, kind of like you would do in Python, right? Tests inside of the documentation, uh, in the code. But let's say I want to make a test case here, right? And I want to make a test case where I'll like, um, <laughs> uh, can parse uh, a comp. This is not a good. <laughs> this, this this is not a good um, uh, thing, but. Uh, like it's it's not sufficiently descriptive of like a test case name, right? But here is a complicated test. <laughs> uh, here's a message that I want to parse, and then I want to say, okay, this is what should this look like? So that's an idea of what that could look like. Uh, we probably want more information than that. Want to see? I might want to look at it after. Does it use a regex? What it, what, um, it's five years ago. <laughs> I mean, that's always true. You look, you look back at anything you've written before and, uh, everything is the product of, uh, situation. Um, how would you describe the general approach that that, co that code took in, uh, in parsing this? Now, how do I want to, how do, how do I want to express this information? Like this is not right. I don't want this because I want more information from the message. What information do I want? Well, I don't know that I care about the badges necessarily or the color. We probably want to get the display name if we can. Um, we could potentially grab like first message and mod and ID and return like this information here would be good. A struct. Okay. How does one make a struct? <laughs> Is there a, a def struct? There is. Um, a struct is a tagged map that allows developers to provide default values for keys, tags to be used in polymorphic dispatches, and compile time assertions. Yes. So I don't, so this is interesting because, so is this struct tied to the module? Fields arguments usually keyword lists with field names, atom keys, default values, corresponding values, all supports list of atoms as its argument. So it looks like, yes, okay. And you say it is. So I don't know, um, maybe? I think it's, it's interesting because I'm 
T C Z TypeScript <laughs> and other things. Um, okay, so enforce keys destruct and type. Yeah. Is there an example of some of that here? We got a doc. We have drive. Enforce keys. Enforce that string keys must always be given when building the struct. So like command would probably be uh, something we want there. Let's uh, let's just keep going down this path and we'll figure out what um, what we want to do here. So we can see here we received the ping. There wasn't anything after the uh, the text, but I think there could be. So what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm just going to take, I wanna keep some flexibility here. So like I said, one of the goals here is to take the information from Twitch chat and funnel and into Redis. Um, and I could just take the messages and figure out who sent the message, and those would be the only things. Um, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's a, a, a good place to start. Um, that will simplify things a little bit. So in that case, really the only thing here is the, the message and the, um, the author, we'll say. And in this, in this scheme, both of those would be required. And then uh, what does at type do? Was that was there an example of that here? Def mod uh, def module user def struct name uh, type t module. Oh, interesting. Just type checking. It is recommended to only use the struct syntax when defining the struct's type. Just linting. Okay, well, so it looks like though that we do at type like that. Type T. Is that? Yep. Okay. Um, I think I want to do one more thing, which is I want to say def is uh, message that is the usual for the type of the module T yeah okay and then Instead of instead of message, can you can you do nested modules, or do we need to do a separate file? You can. Maybe I don't want to. <laughs> Copy this bit. Let's do message. goes away so how do we yeah def mod t 
to deaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, I could do that. I just, there's something weird about, to me anyway, right now, there's something weird about having a message inside a message parser. So how do I, how do I construct? I could probably just look at the doc here for deaf struct. How do I make you? Percent and then this thing, yeah? Percent, this thing. Uh, I don't want any of those. And then otherwise unknown. Yep. Just don't name it with the parent name again as it gets prefixed. Um, how do you mean? How do you mean? <laughs> All right. So this this bit is kind of silly. We don't want to uh, necessarily do this. Referring to the nested modules. Okay. Spring, string split message by space into three parts. I mean, this, this doesn't add up. Is it four parts? Yeah. And what if I were to do? Um, Pilot, how do I um is it control right arrow? Four parts. Again, it, it really really likes that pattern. <laughs> okay. Um colon message. So this is Okay, we don't need that file. Uh, let's see, where is my test? So can we... Okay, that, that is a thing that you've done there. I'm confused about what what it thinks it's doing. Yeah, okay. This file, I just want to delete. It's not doing anything anyway. Test helper, message parser. Um, do we need to do anything to tell it that that file exists? I don't know. How do we refresh this list? Oh, not like that. Um, underscore. Oh. Oh, yeah. I see. Will that work? Hey, now it sees it. Run that. Yay. Parse message one is undefined. Module message parser is not available. Did you mean twitchbot.messageparser.parse message? What did I do? Ah. Uh, and of course, this is not um, the correct result now. We should expect something like this. There we go. Still fails. Maybe. I can alias the module. To 
avoid having to write the entire path. <laughs> Oops. Okay. How does one do that? Alias thing? Okay. And then... Will that work then? Or do I still have to say message parser? I still have to say message parser. Yep, I see that. I can import it. Okay. Options. We have options. Uh, on the plus side, it seems that the, the the change to the ping situation has fixed things. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's be a little bit more serious about our parsing here. <laughs> what if we just like ignore whatever is going on here? This this is this is fine. Oops. Whatever this is, is fine. Do we get a message? I like how we get... Oh, right. Right, right, right. So, when we're running our tests... Uh... <laughs> when we're running our tests, it's also starting the application. And then that's failing. Um, but that's fine, I guess. Okay. Uh, but our test passed. Our test passes. Um, but we're gonna, or it doesn't. Exit with reason, normal error code. Okay. Did it pass or not? Make up your minds. It did not. Okay. It still says unknown. Oh, right, right, right. Because the, the actual, right, 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 right. So. Let's take a look at this. Let's actually think about this for a second. So where are the spaces? There's a space there. So there's one bit here before the space, and there's another bit here before the space, and there's a bit here and a bit here. Uh, really, we need like five parts. Assuming string split works the way I think it does. And as many parts as possible by default, but it can be controlled via the parts option. Spring is split into at most as many parts as the option as this option specifies. Okay. And let's make sure that we are using this right. So, uh, do we have an example? There we go. So we can just pass a string, and we can pass parts. Um, so, we wouldn't expect to see a colon as part of this. What we would expect is this part here. We'll call this tags. And then the uh, author, although not really, it's, it's a lot of stuff here. And then a command. A priv message. And then a space and then a channel, which we don't care about in this context. And then a colon and then the message. So if I run this, does this work? No, 
because it gives us this whole thing. Um, so, let's let's do this. Let's let's make this a little fancier. So we know this is going to be like this, and like this, and then something like that. You not happy about that? Because the left left operand of concatenate has unknown size. Isn't it? Oh, but it isn't the case for auth. Okay, so we can't <laughs> we can't do this, can we? Matching a, a string in in the middle. to see the logic eight years ago assume it's still valid uh leave you the snips okay let's take a look yeah okay so it what you have here make it a little bit bigger yeah i understand okay good, good, good. uh i mean if it works <laughs> uh okay so we have what is our input? It, it is the string, the message to break. Uh, if we didn't have a string, we fail. Hey, this looks familiar. Uh, then you say, okay, do you start with an at? If you do, you parse tags. Um, I'm just kind of assuming that there is going to be because I'm uh, the, this bot is specifically like it's adding that capability to, to get the tag. So it should see that on the messages that I, I care about. One thing I'm doing here is I'm specifically only caring about these prove message commands. So I'm only looking for actual chat messages here. Uh, we could do more, in, in which case we would need to model more uh, in, the, in the data structure that we're building out, but um, and then if, okay, so then you split out everything after the at sign uh, to the first space. So you have tags and then S. So you're, you're kind of like incrementally pulling stuff off of, uh, you could call it a buffer, which is what S is, uh, of the, the remaining payload to parse. And so then you're looking This is interesting. Couldn't you have just said S sub zero? This is one character, right? Um, so if there's a colon, which there would be for, ba, 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 ba. here we go, this part. You're stripping that off and then you are concerned about an empty S. Oh yeah, if S is empty at that point, yeah, then you would get a an index error if you if you weren't doing a slice. Oh, that's kind of clever, actually. Um, I mean, you could do the same thing here, <laughs> but of course you're already checking to see if the original S is empty, so that's not necessary. And if, if tags, then um, format tags prefix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Um, so I think though, if I do this, and then how do I? Here, strip the first character off of author. Oh, I don't have a uh, like an auto complete here.
Okay, I can do that. Uh, okay. I see. Okay, I can't do that this way either. I have to... Actually, okay, so I should be able to do this bit though, right? And that'll give me something that then I, then I can, um, yeah, I can do that. That'll replace everything after the exclamation point with an empty string. No, oh, doesn't like that. Code left is the result of parse message. Right. Um, string replace. This works. Uh, foo colon colon eight. What is that? What what is the colon colon eight there do? Ah, so this is how we do a regex. Binary of size eight. Okay, well that passed. So what we should be able to do oops, is um, use message parser here. And um, Switchbot.message parser. So then, if it this this is message thing is a mistake. Uh, instead, what we should do is we should say mm, yeah something. I don't know. So if we Oh. Um if we're doing this, what we really should do is we should do something more like this. Of course that breaks our test. <laughs> kind of things uh, in a in a word place. So how do we handle it so that if we so we parse message and hmm. 
Like, if we do this... Alright, we can do that, and then we can, you know, do this. But, if I want to look at this and say, oh... I only want to do this line... If... The shape of this is okay... I think it would be neat and good practice to do a pipeline like uh, message thing piped into parse tags, parse th piped into parse whatever, and then the first thing. Uh, huh. How do we do nothing? You know, Python we could just pass. <laughs> Alright, that's not even a that's not even the right comment style. Um, okay. That goes away. Uh, oh just nil. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So let's let's take a look at this idea. Ooh, yes, it is It is about time. I think it is probably time for the stream to wrap up, unfortunately. Because um, I need to get some food going as well. Um, I think probably next time around, we'll, we'll see if uh, the next coding stream next Sunday will be focused more on this. Yeah, I know. All good things must come to an end uh, for the time being. Next stream, we might come back to this, or we might... Um, you know, and that might be like talking to Redis and stuff, or we might go back to working on some of the other Rust components or front-end components for Glowing Telegram. I have been also working on that um, over the intervening week to make forward progress, and um, it is, it's looking pretty good in terms of actually getting things exported and then imported into DaVinci Resolve. So... Progress is being made in this whole glowing telegram project. The next stream will be tomorrow. More Minecraft, modded Minecraft, great tech new horizons, uh, etc., etc. I caught it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, just forget it's Minecraft. Pretend it's first person. Um, well, not Factoria. We don't really have belts. That's one thing I, I miss about, like, the create stuff. Is doing, like, uh, belts and stuff between machines. Alright, hold on. I gotta snooze at. Um, let's, uh, let's do a raid really quick. Um, let me also do this. To do. Consider. A pipeline. Uh, E.G. Yeah, yeah, like that. Uh, I could actually take what you sent. I mean, let's... Or... Something like that. Okay. So, we're gonna, we're gonna commit all of this. Uh, so this is in the pull request. Issue number nine is the branch. It's pull request, um... To, to, to this one. I suggest a tuple for simplicity, otherwise not sure how you keep the state. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Oh, right, 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 right. So like the raw message and then what we're parsing. So does LM, 
uh, okay, so this is, this is, so this is like, um, this is gonna be where you're accumulating. The first thing my mind to, went to was a reduce, but it's not exactly like that. But okay, yeah, we can do something like that. Uh, all right, so who are we going to raid? 